five minutes, guys, five minutes. Okay, it gives me a pleasure to introduce our next speaker. This has been a day full of, of great talks, and, and, and it just and it ends with it just keeps getting better. Um, I've known Ray for, for a number of years. I recruited his son when I was coaching at St. John Fisher, an outstanding young man, and, and also met, got to meet the family. Ray is going to talk to us today about a, a cause and, and, and a topic that's very uh, familiar with to him. He was a, a former pro boxer uh, who had some head injury symptoms, did not pay a lot of attention to them, and, and, and is going to tell you a little bit about that with his story. Also, he's got a website which he'll tell you, and there'll be some cards available. We'd like you guys to go on there and like the website. It's called Second Impact, uh, just to like that, because as you look around, you guys are role <laughs> models for the youth kids and the younger kids that, that are looking up to you. So. Without further ado, I'd like to bring on Ray Ciangolini. Thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate you turning out today. And uh, every day is different for me. And uh, I've done probably over 150 or so of these. And you would think, with the speech being the same, that I could remember it. But I struggle. I have to go with uh, reading off the cue, and it's color-coded, and every day is different, so bear with me. And I train, each, each one of these, I train just like it was a fight. I train really hard for it and hope that it, it comes out, because it really means so much to get through to you on, on this subject, because it costs me dearly, and I don't want it happening to anybody here. And, uh, but it's going to be a tough one here following uh, Mr. Reyes. This young man, if you're going to pick a role model, I, I don't think you can, you can get any better than that. I watched Walter at Syracuse. I watched him in the pros. And uh, his, his, as good as he was on the field, his, uh, just as good as he was off the field, and that's so important, so please, uh, if you're going to emulate anybody, I, uh, it'd be an honor to, for, to be like this gentleman. Uh, I'm going to start out, I'll even introduce myself again here. My name is Ray Giangolini. Uh, I'm a former middleweight boxer, and for many years, I've been uh, fighting the toughest opponent of my life. The opponent is dementia pugilistica and Parkinson's syndrome. These progressive disorders are the direct result of my not addressing a concussion properly as a young boxer. The consequences of my actions have so deeply affected my life. My intention is not to scare anybody here. I endorse playing all sports. But if you get your bell rung, you have to address it. You have to address it correctly. It's not rocket science. It's a very simple thing. You get that bell rung, have it addressed properly. Um, my goal is to uh, educate you in the hopes that I may prevent someone from making the same life-altering mistakes that I made. Never take for granted the privilege of playing the sport you love. Be dedicated, take care of your body, and make wise decisions. This will enable you to reach your full potential. And another thing, I don't know, I hope you never take for granted the league that you play in and the quality of coaching that you have here. When I go through these names, that's a Hall of Fame staff. 
So I, I hope you really never take that for granted and make full use of it. I want to start you out with uh, some quick facts on concussions. You play clean, you play hard, concussions are going to happen and they're hard to prevent. But what is preventable is when an athlete who has already sustained a concussion sustains a second concussion before symptoms from the first injury have properly healed. This is called second impact syndrome and it carries with it a high risk of permanent brain damage and in some cases can be fatal. The concussion that, ex that exhibits mild symptoms could potentially be the most dangerous, guys. When the symptoms are mild, this is the one you're more apt to think it's not that serious. And you're probably not apt to report it and try to play through it. But that's the wrong thing to do because it puts you at risk for second impact syndrome. Another thing, concussions do accumulate. You have to monitor the number of concussions you get, especially within a short period of time. After your first concussion, you're more vulnerable to sustain a second, and it's easier yet to get a third and so on. Several concussions can put you at risk of developing a neurological disorder later in life. Like, um, there are three important steps to recovering from a concussion. I call them the three big R's. And if you know you follow these three big R's, you're on the right path. It's called, the first one is report. Always report an injury to your coach, your trainer, or supervisor. Right now, they're on top of everything. They're right on top of it. The help is there. It's up to you to go get it. So you have to report it. The next is rest. You listen to your doctor and get plenty of rest. But listen to your doctor's instructions fully to the T. And rehabilitation, uh, go through your school protocol and you should be good to go. Because the good news is concussion should heal. You must follow your school, I can't stress enough, you have to follow your school concussion program and obey your doctor's instructions. It's when you deviate from their instructions that you're inviting potential problems. The symptoms, I want to go over these. These are so important. You've probably heard them, but you're going to get it again. This is how important it is. This is the signs. These are the signs. The symptoms of a concussion, they're, they're the body's red flags. It's Mother Nature raising these red flags, telling you something's wrong. They can be immediate or delayed in onset by hours or days after the injury. The symptoms can consist of the following, headache or feeling pressure in the head, temporary loss of consciousness, confusion or feeling in a fog, amnesia, loss of memory or forgetfulness, concentration problems, dizziness or seeing stars, ringing in the ears, nausea or vomiting, slurred speech, fatigue, poor balance, unusual behavior, personality changes, irritability, depression, sleep disturbances, trouble sleeping or sleeping too much, blurred vision, sensitivity to light and noise. You know, it's very important to pay attention to these symptoms. My problems could have been avoided if I had known the consequences of ignoring the symptoms of a concussion. Look, don't, don't ignore them like I did. Get help immediately. Tell your coach, your trainer, or your supervisor. The reasons why athletes hide concussions. I'm going to give you a few here. The reasoning behind all that. Fear of losing a starting position. Feeling of being invincible. Peer pressure. Look. Don't ever let anyone pressure you or a teammate into making a bad choice, which could affect your future. Another one is feeling of responsibility. You owe it to the team. Here's something to think about. I want you to think about this one now on responsibility to the team. If you're dazed, you're not performing at 100%. 
And if you're not performing at 100%, you're not going to be helping the team out anyway. So why put yourself unnecessarily in harm way, harm's way? I really wish you'd ponder on that one. Then we have fear of losing a scholarship. I'll tell you, if you're a serious scholarship candidate, the scouts already know about you. They're well aware of your talent. Allow yourself to fully recover, and you're right back in line for that scholarship. Another concussion factor to consider is adrenaline, guys. Adrenaline. Adrenaline is the master of deceit and can temporarily mask the symptoms of a concussion. If you've had your bell rung, don't let adrenaline fool you into thinking you can go, you can go out and get one more play in. That one more play could be the difference between you sitting out the rest of the game or sitting out the rest of your career. It's not a very good gamble. I want to quickly remark on protective headgear. Don't let protective headgear give you a false sense of security. Protective headgear will not prevent most concussions. A helmet is an important piece of safety equipment that should be respected. When used correctly, it can help to, it can help to lessen the severity of, a, of an head injury. The important, most important message I want to, you to take away from here today is honesty. This is the most important thing that I'm here for. Your coaching staff, trainer, and school, above all else, I mean above all else, are looking out for your well-being. You have to help them do the best they can for you. As a team, you all need to help each other out also. When a player gets their bell rung, reflexes, reaction time, thinking, and judgment can be impaired to varying degrees. Anyone that continues playing in, in this state is so vulnerable for a serious injury. The coaches and refs, so they only have two eyes. They can't see everything, especially an incident that happens away from the main play. Look out for each other. Alert your coach or trainer that the teammate may have gotten their bell rung. Be 100% honest about your symptoms to your coach or trainer so they can give you an accurate evaluation after a suspected head injury. Be 100% honest about your symptoms during rehab so you don't relapse and prolong your recovery time. Athletes enduring long periods of rehab from a concussion sometimes return to play before their symptoms have totally resolved. Be honest about lingering symptoms. Remember, if you return to competition and are not entirely symptom-free, you run that risk again of second impact syndrome. When taking the baseline concussion preseason test, be honest with your answers and do the very best you can on that test. This test is another important tool that is used to help ensure your safe return to play after a concussion. Well, another one, this is the last one before I get into my story, and it's very important to both myself and Walter Reyes. I'd like to discuss role model with you. Being a good role model, you know, is both important on and off the field. Young students really look up to you older athletes. If they see you act responsibly and address a concussion properly, so will they. If they hear you boast about playing through a concussion and toughen it out, then they may attempt to hide a concussion, putting them in unnecessary risk for second impact syndrome. I find it alarming when I hear athletes or former athletes bragging about or exaggerating about all the concussions they've had or how they uh, played through them and gutted them out. Some athletes even pose hiding a concussion as a badge of honor or courage. Well, let me tell you, I'm still paying the price for gutting out a concussion. And I can tell you what I did was neither an honorable or a courageous act it was a downright senseless act. Remember, your example could affect some very impressionable young athlete. Now I'd like to tell you my story. Thank you.
Great job. Great job, right. Um, again, today, it's, uh, I've been doing this for seven years now, and, and, and I'm looking at the speakers we've had. The three speakers we had today were by far better than anything we've ever done here. So I, I think it's just, we're, 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 we're growing. We're double what we were here last year also. So things are, we're really looking good. NFL and the Bills and the National Guard are really, really helping us out with money. And you see these jerseys that you're in now as is, is Nike is, is on board. So um, we're going to let Coach Wadhams talk for a second. He is going to uh, get the 7-on-7 seven seven organized. Um, again, like I said earlier, go to the Second Impact Facebook site and and like it. And then, like I, we're going to be doing some stuff out in the youth leagues here soon with four or five hundred youth league kids, and and they're all from your towns. So they'll they'll see you guys on there, and and, and hopefully we'll we'll get this cause moving in the right direction, continuing in the right direction. So, Coach Wadham. Guys, uh, we're going to go to team now. So you're going to go with your team coaches for about 15 minutes so you can get organized. The ones that if, you, if your team is so small, we're going to combine you. So you, you'll get be able to get organized also. We're gonna, and then we're going to do some seven on seven. We only have about an hour and 45 minutes left. I think our camp's been going very well. But, but receivers, quarterbacks, you won't need your helmet or shoulder pads. I would advise you with a mouthpiece. There's no contact. All right, it's two-hand touch. If you think you're going to collide, let the kid catch it. Nobody's going to win or lose here. We're here to learn. All right, so be smart about things. Be aggressive, but be smart. Lineman, I'm assuming you're going to need the helmets and shoulder pads as usual. Okay? And go to, Lyman, go with your team first, and your coaches will decide what we're going to do there. <laughs> Could we have one coach from each 7 and 7 team come up here and meet with uh, Coach Rice? Okay. Matt Hall from DeSales, you'll be over here with the uh, 